Hey, my tech friends, thanks for stopping by. Please like and subscribe if you haven't already. Let's continue to grow this channel. Hope you guys enjoy this video. Hey guys, so sticking with our X-Lite uh, discovery this week, uh, we've done the X-Lite Pro V3, we've done the Windows 10 version with and without Defender, we've looked at the microsystem, and now we're on Atomic. We're gonna take a look specifically to see what Atomic offers or brings to the table versus what we saw in our microsystem as well as our um, optimum system. We're going to start the installation process. Now this operating system says that it, it only requires about two and a half gigs installed. So we'll see what that looks like. Okay guys, so we are booted right now into the Atomic Edition of Windows 11. Now let's take a look to see what we have as far as utilization is concerned. So we're about the same as we are on a micro system. Don't really see much of a difference between one and the other. Let's take a look to see what we have as far as storage. Ooh, we are small in this operating system. So our total install operating system on this particular system is about two and a half gigs. We're at 2.53 gigs roughly, which is really small for a Windows operating system, especially one that actually boots and works. I'm actually impressed with how tiny this footprint or overhead is from a storage perspective. Now you're still going to need at least a gig of memory to run this thing. So keep that in mind that if you're running an operating system or a desktop that's 512 megs of RAM and you think that this is going to install, it's not. With that said, it would probably run on a phone. My guess is, is that if you wanted to, you could probably uh, jailbreak a device, an Android device or a Win, uh, an, an Apple device and actually run this operating system on a phone. Now. From a functional standpoint, it'd probably be a nightmare because I'm guessing that tablet mode probably isn't still enabled in this operating system. So clicking on these tiny little buttons and clicks and stuff like that with a phone screen would, would really stink. It would really be, it would be rough. But with the overhead as far as the size of the operating system, I, I have a feeling it would work on a phone or a uh, tablet device. Um, or really, you know, maybe even, uh, you know, like a thin client or something like that, if you got them laying around and you want to try to use this as an embedded operating system, this might actually work pretty well for that. So the OS runs. And if I'm judging based off of our previous scans on the actual operating systems, I'm guessing that this is probably going to be around the 68 to 70 on the infos in a one medium. That's going to be my best guess. Um, and I only say that because every time we reduce something in the operating system, typically speaking with uh, the developer here for the XLite systems, they don't spend any time and go through the firewall configuration. So everything default from the firewall configuration is still allowing ports through. So the smaller the OS, the more holes through the firewall that go nowhere and that causes security alerts or in informationals inside of our scans. So that's my guess here on this particular operating system as to what we're gonna see. But it'll be interesting to actually test drive this operating system out. Because of how small it is, I wonder from a functional standpoint, can you use this as a daily driver? And that's something we'll have to uh, jump into in a later video. But as far as the uh, configuration, as far as what we got right in here, let's take a look in our control panel, in our Windows Defender Firewall, Advanced Settings. I'm guessing that this is, yeah, so this is still your default Windows 11 configuration. This is still your out-of-the-box configuration. So because we don't have the backbone or back end of the operating system corresponding with that, we're going to get dinged by our scans showing that there's uh, portions of the operating system that are basically allowed to be seen through the firewall because the firewall ports are open, but the OS isn't listening on those ports. So let's take a look here too. Let's see if we have in our control panel settings, let's see if we have under add remove programs, do we have anything interesting in here? So we just have start us back. Interesting. So Windows features themselves doesn't exist. So we'll have to use DISM commands to actually pull that information back. This is gonna be an interesting operating system to actually check to see if this is something we can use on a, as a daily driver because of how small it is and because we already have errors here of missing optional features and configuration in the operating system. Again, you know, I, I don't know what it would take to actually remove that from the actual Explorer uh, window, but you know, that's, uh, that's something that if you click on these things and you can't actually get to them, that's, that's an alarming scenario as far as a configuration is uh, concerned. So let's, um, 
do what we do best. Let's just scan this thing. And then we'll kick off in our next video where we'll go through the configuration, actually attempt to lock the system down, and then we'll also try to see if we could use it as a functional daily driver. Can we actually install things? Will things run? Um, things of that nature. Like right now, for instance, I know I have no network adapter because I'm not, there's no drivers included in the package for the installation. So I'm gonna have to install my VMware tools before we could even run our scan. Now generally, I don't show when we're running VMware tools, but I have a feeling that since we can't get to add remove Windows components, I'm really wondering if .NET Framework is installed on this system, which I believe is required in order for us to install VMware tools. Well, it looks like we must have .NET installed on the system, because if not, I don't think I'd be able to install that. Now, with that said, let's reboot the system. Um, let's run our scan against the system, and then we will take a look specifically at our configuration to see what we get back from our Nessus scan. Okay, guys, so just to recap, uh, XLite, no Defender. This is the optimum version. We had 63 infos, one medium. If we dig and we go into the XLite micro, we had 66 infos and one medium. So I ex expect us to get probably 68 to 70 mediums, or, or 68 to 70 infos and one medium on our Atomic Edition. Okay, so let's take a look now at our Atomic Edition. So we have 65 infos. We have one medium, but we also have one high. So that's different than what we had. So I mean, we are we are roughly 65 info, so we, we're, we're actually lower on the info configuration than we were on the previous. But we do have a high, which is not usually good. So I checked our high, and it looks like the configuration for a high alert is basically we're allowed to use anonymous access to access the SID details of the user accounts on the machine, which is not a good thing. Basically what that allows people to do is in the event that they had access to your system is they can anonymously access your system and then figure out who the users are on the system. And since this system is configured to not have a password on logon, you could then just use the usernames and test them until you could get into the system. Or you do have a user that created a logon. Now you know what the username is and you could use that to use like a, um, a dictionary crack to actually attempt to breach the or circumvent the security of the system to get in. And that's why this is a high alert. So this didn't exist in the other versions of our uh, configuration for our XLite system. So this is something that we're gonna have to definitely fix on this particular operating system when we go through the process of trying to secure the atomic version. But something to keep in mind is if this operating system, again, stated previous is it's small enough to run on a phone but you would need to secure this before you put it on a phone. I wouldn't want to be connected to a public Wi-Fi somewhere on a public device with this set this way because somebody would be able to then just access your device. I mean, it would be really easy at that point, you know, UNC path directly into the Windows operating system that's connected to a Starbucks and access all of the files that are on the system. That's usually not a good sign. So that's something to keep in mind. Now I covered the SID information in here because this is the same SID information that would exist in every single one of these machines that was running the Atomic version. So I don't want to cause a security hole by pu publishing this information on the internet. Now with that said, if you have one of these systems running on a phone or a tablet device, make sure you secure this issue on that device. Make sure everything has a password that has access to that system and disable the anonymous authentication into that system. Because if you don't, you take it someplace, you run a high risk of somebody being able to access your files. Okay, so where does that leave us with this operating system? See, the thing is, is on this operating system, I'm kind of excited about this one. I think this is kind of cool because it's much smaller than everything else. Um, and we also have found some issues with the OS already. So those are things that we could uh, resolve and fix through this video series to take a look at this atomic version. We also found uh, some security risks in the actual operating system that don't exist in the other versions. So we're gonna have to dig into those to figure out specifically why this is different than the other operating systems, but it's clearly different than the other operating systems. So this is gonna be a fun one. Uh, hopefully you guys enjoy this series and uh, thanks for tuning in.